going on everybody this is Kerry Wood back at you with another edition of Sports and Swag Radio we're going to talk about the NBA playoffs right now with what we've seen over the um, course of the weekend and what a weekend it was the action was unbelievable several games going right down to the wire Couple, uh, we had one game go to overtime Boston Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks uh, had to be game, had to be the game of the weekend. That series is so you know looking like it's going to be an ultra competitive series with two teams that are pretty equally matched, uh, especially with the fact that the Celtics are missing uh, Kyrie Irving and Marcus Smart. <laughs> Very good ball game, but uh, we'll start off with that one. You know, they, you know, I could say it was the marquee game. I wouldn't say it's the marquee game, but it turned out to be just an unbelievably entertaining basketball game. Uh, the one thing that I will say about that game is, you know, besides the fact that, you know, besides the fact that Boston won the game. I was impressed with what I saw from the Milwaukee Bucks. I think I have to start by saying that. Uh, just the fact that you've seen this team uh, pretty much with very little uh, playoff experience. Of course, you have you know your old cats on the bench like Jason Terry and those guys, but uh, Giannis and Tata Kumpo, the Greek freak. You know, uh, Chris Middleton, I guess he has some experience there, but Eric Bledsoe, those guys, Malcolm Brogdon, very, very little playoff experience, and uh, those guys came and did some work today. I I will admit, they really did, because I thought the place that they would uh, lose this series, and I did pick Boston to win this series in six or seven games. I think Milwaukee proved to me that they can, if they can continue to play with that type of mental toughness that they played with down the stretch of that game, being able to come up with big stops, um, the defensive end of the floor, they can win this series. I, I really didn't think we'd see that from Milwaukee. So we'll see how this thing goes. We all know that Greek Freak is going to be incredibly hard to guard for anyone. And uh, he was at today, 35 points on 11 of 21 shooting, 13 of 16 from the free throw line. He had 11, I'm sorry, 11 defensive rebounds, 13 rebounds overall, seven assists. <laughs> big time, big time uh, performance from the Greek freak. Chris Milton joined him, joined with him with having 31 points of his own. Of course, hitting that crazy shot with a, just 0.5 seconds left in the in the uh, regulation to send that game to overtime. Huge shot. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon chipped in 16. So Milwaukee, they they proved to me that they can hang in with Boston, even though I, again I understand Boston's missing all of these guys. Kyrie Irving especially, but man, the way that team plays, the way they come at you uh, so aggressively, especially with playoff time like this, I, I didn't know if Milwaukee would be able to stand that pressure, and they really stood up to it. Uh, Al Horford led the uh, Boston Celtics. He had 24 points, 12 rebounds, 3 block shots. Just kind of looking over some of the stats here. Jason Tatum, 19 points, the rookie out of Duke. Jalen Brown, his second season, 20 points. But what about Terry Rozier? Terry Rozier and actually Marcus Morris. Terry Rozier, the young point guard out of Louisville, just tore it up. He hit that big three to (laughs) put the Celtics up for about, about... I, I guess 0.5 seconds <laughs> that's uh, a half a second however you want to call it uh, put them up 99-96 until of course uh, Milton hit that 3 but 
23 points from Terry Rozier. Huge game. Again, those are the type of performances Boston's going to have to get if they're going to move on. I, again, I have Boston winning this series. I think they're, they're setting up a collision course with the Philadelphia 76ers in the second round. That is going to be your next big NBA rivalry. I'm telling you right now, if you don't know it, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be like the 1980s when we saw Dr. J and Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and Moses Malone and Maurice Cheeks and Dennis Johnson. I'm telling you right now, that rivalry is coming back. When you look at how young both these uh, franchises are, the players who you have running the show, uh, in the front office, head coaches, all of that, it's going to be the next big rivalry. So again, Boston takes a good step going up one game to nothing with their home win against the Milwaukee Bucks, 113-107. Let's move on. Let's move on since we I kind of brought up the Sixers. And I know this was the Boston game was Sunday. We're going to move to Saturday. So we'll stay in the East. Philadelphia 76ers doing what they had to do and then some <laughs> against the Miami Heat. And this one, this is a series that uh, I was kind of thinking, and I'm, I'm still not convinced Philadelphia is just going to run over Miami. But I, I was, I'm thinking this is going to be a very intriguing series, possible, quite possibly a six or seven game series. I still like Philadelphia to win it. But, man, you have to be incredibly impressed with how they do this. Put it on Miami in the second half. Miami was up, what, three, four points at the half in that basketball game. And before you know it, they were down double digits starting that second half. Incredible, incredible, uh, you know, play from Ben Simmons. This dude is unbelievable. Uh, J.J. Redick hitting some threes. J.J. Redick had 28 points. Uh, four of six from three-point range. Dario Saric, who a lot of people overlook his uh, importance on this basketball team. He had 20 points. Uh, again, it, you know, Ben Simmons. It all comes back to him, don't get me wrong. Ben Simmons was unbelievable with the, the moves he was making to get to the to get to the hoop to uh, break down the defense, and then he was finding guys open. Whether it was cutting to the hoop, whether it was Redick on the three point line, whomever it was, and he was just unbelievable with uh, 17 points, 14 assists. Marco Bellinelli off the bench, 25 points. I mean, it just, just goes on and on. Ersan Ilyasova, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Ersan Ilyasova. I mean, he's the journeyman. I mean, just fantastic performance as the Philadelphia 76ers beat the Miami Heat 130 to 103. We'll see what Miami has. You know, what kind of adjustments can they make? Right now, it's all really been pretty much stated that uh, just like game one, Joel Embiid is not going to be available for the Sixers. Doesn't look like they need him right now, to be quite honest. <laughs> just does not look like they need him. And, uh, you know, you know, we'll see. Hopefully, I think Miami will come back and uh, make a game of it uh, in game two. We'll see. Moving on, moving on, we'll stay in the east, of course. And let's take a look at uh, yesterday's game between the uh, Toronto Raptors and Washington Wizards. Two teams that, I don't know, man, I, I don't know if anybody feels like they can trust either one of these basketball teams. And that's crazy to think about when you talk about the Toronto Raptors being the number one seed and people like, I don't know if I can trust them or not. I don't know if I can trust them as, throw up as far as I can throw them. But that's what you have here. But good performance by them in the second half, especially. I thought they kind of had some struggles there. Uh, 
early in that game, Washington was kind of, you know, kind of allow they kind of allowed Washington to kind of hang around in that basketball game. And uh, but Toronto with their bench, it was their bench that really I thought kind of kept Washington at bay, it kept John Wall and those guys at bay, and uh, Bradley Beal. Markeith Morris, all those guys had really good games. Wall, 23 points. Bradley, 19, uh, Bradley Beal, 19 points. Markeith Morris, 22 points. Mike Scott, 14 points off the bench. Boy, I think the difference was Toronto, their bench was just unbelievable. And it kind of, they kind of really stepped in for uh, Kyle Lowry, who had a slow start to the game. Really, Still didn't have a good game at all, only, only 11 points. But what else is new with him in play at playoff time when the calendar switches to April? This dude, I don't know, man, checks out. But he did have, he did step up in the second half. I you have to give him credit for that, and uh, had a little bit better game, a little bit better time of it there in the second half. Demar Derozan, 17 points. Serge Ibaka, 23 points. 12 rebounds. He was huge. You know, but it was like, it was the guys like DeLon Wright, 18 points off the bench. CJ Miles, who you know, this dude uh, as soon as he jumps into the gym, he's uh, he's within range of uh, shooting the basketball. This dude shoots threes like uh, nobody's business. He was 4 for 7 from 3 point range last night and uh those were the guys that really kept Toronto afloat while they uh, Lowry and DeRozan were struggling. But luckily, those guys were able to keep it going, get it going there in the second half, and Toronto wins the game 114-106. Again, you know, I've, I've got Toronto winning this series, you know, and that's, and that's really, I don't know, man. It, you, you would think this series really would be a toss up and, and you know and maybe it is maybe Washington's gonna step up but do you really trust that I don't <laughs> I don't I just you know and right now I think it's just kind of the lesser of two evils right now I know the Toronto is the number one seed I know their bench has really stepped up this season to kind of supplement what Lowry and DeRozan give them but I don't know, man. I, I just can't get with it. <laughs> just can't get with it. But, again, we'll see what happens. The Raptors take game 1-1-14-106. One, 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 oh, and in the uh, the last game in the Eastern Conference, it's probably going to be the game that everyone's going to be talking about. Stephen A., those cats. Sterling, uh, Sterling Sharp. Skip Bayless, all those guys in the morning. We talking about this 18 point drubbing <laughs> that the Cavaliers took to the Indiana Pacers, 98 to 80. Let's just be real about it. Cleveland was never in this basketball game, never. Uh, Indiana jumped out of the gate something like what, 15, 16 to four. And, you know, Cleveland made a couple runs here and there. They cut it to six or seven or eight points, but I don't think they ever got any closer than that the entire basketball game. At home, game one. <laughs> I, I just, you know, again, this, this, it gets back to what I've been saying about this basketball team for a few months, right? For a few months, even ever since the trade, Ever since the trade that, you know, uh, was supposed to turn the season around, possibly, when they, you know, they got Rodney Hood from Utah. They got George Hill from Utah. They got Larry Nance Jr. from the Lakers. They got Jordan Clarkson from the Lakers. All of those guys, and I, I don't see any difference in this basketball team. I just don't. I don't. I don't. And I can think. I think that you can kind of say that on both ends of the floor. I don't think they're much better defensively. They're definitely not better offensively. I think they've even maybe digressed offensively. I mean, that 
obvious today scoring on 80, only 80 points. So, I don't know why uh, I'm hearing so many people just say, well, you know, oh, Cleveland's going to be in the finals. I just listening to Shaq and Chuck and Kenny and EJ on inside the NBA, and Shaq is like, oh, well, you know, too bad Indiana's not going to win this series. I mean, how can you say that? This this game was never close. <laughs> it's not like Indiana hit a half-court shot at the end of the ball game to win. It's not like they, you know, Cleveland blew a, you know, maybe got complacent and blew a big lead in the second half or anything like that. Cleveland was never in this basketball game. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Cleveland's going to lose the series, but... To sit here and say, oh, Indiana's not going to win this series. I mean, I, I don't, if you're saying that right now, I don't know what game you watched today. I'm just going to be real about it. I don't know what game you watched. But let's check out some of the stats in this basketball game. Uh, humongous game from Victor Oladipo. 32 points on 11 of 19 shooting. This dude has just come along. He is unquestionably the comeback player of the year in the NBA. Well-deserved. This dude just killed it today. Uh, he had six rebounds, four assists as well. Plus minus with 21. Thaddeus Young had a plus minus with 23. But you look at the contribution that he gave, I think, defensively. Uh, just across the board, Bojan, I'm not sure if I'm saying this guy's name right, Bojan Bogdanovich. I think I got his, <laughs> I got his last name right, but I don't know about his first name, but this dude, 15 points, this dude can shoot the eyes out. He's only one of six from three today, but again, I'm seeing this dude taking dudes off the dribble, going to the hoop. I mean, come on, man. Cleveland's defense just... It's been awful. Let's just be real about it. Lance Stevenson, Mr. Blowing LeBron's ear, 12 points. <laughs> I want to see him blowing his ear in this series, man. I, I want to see that. That would be <laughs> paramount. <laughs> it would be absolutely paramount if we could see that. I mean, I mean, if you look at these numbers from Indiana, it's not fantastic numbers, to be honest with you, except for, uh, for all the depots. I mean, Miles Turner, nice game, 16 points, 8 rebounds. It's a nice game, but nothing spectacular. I mean, I don't. I think this Indiana team can play better. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I'm not saying Cleveland's going to win this. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that Indiana's going to win this series. But how anyone can sit there and look at this ball game today and say, oh, Cleveland's going to be fine, no question about it. I don't know what game you're looking at. Real quick, let's look at their stats. The Cavaliers. Of course, what else is new? LeBron James leads the way scoring 24 points on 7 of 17 shooting. Other than that, that was it, man. 15 points from J.R. Smith. Larry Nance Jr., 10 points. But let's look at the rest of the starting five. George Hill, 7 points. Rodney Hood, 9 points. Kevin Love, 9 points in 34 minutes. 3 of uh, three of 8 shooting. He had 14 rebounds. No, oh, 17 rebounds. Good rebounding day for Kevin Love. But I guess that's because he had a lot of missed shots going on. Jeff Green, 0 points. 0. It's not going to get it done. It's not going to get it done. I mean, it, it's... One thing I do agree with that Shaq and the guys are saying tonight is that these guys are waiting on LeBron to do too much for this basketball team, especially on the offensive end. That's got to stop. I mean, Kevin Love, he's not necessarily going to get shots on his own, but he's got to be more aggressive. He's got to shoot more than eight shots. Rodney Hood's a better player than being four of eight for nine points. George Hill, Kyle Corver, well, he only played three minutes. These dudes are waiting for LeBron James to save them. And uh, again, LeBron has been unbelievable. Don't get me wrong, but LeBron is, I think he's lost at least a half a step. You can't do 
You can't score 50 points every night. You can't do it. He could have scored, well, he could have scored 50 and they would have won the night, of course. But I don't know, man. We'll see what Cleveland does here in the uh, future games. What kind of adjustments they can make. I don't want adjustment they need to make. These, these dudes need to be more aggressive. They need to play playoff defense. That's Those are the adjustments that need to be made. Again, 98-80, to 80, Indiana wins that game. Let's step over to the West. First game of the evening tonight. Oklahoma City Thunder. Utah Jazz. I don't say, man, Paul George. And I'm going to give my... Uh, player of the weekend <laughs> here at the end of this uh, podcast at the end of this show Paul George put his name in the hat big time let's just be real about it Paul George 36 points on 8 3 point shots this dude this is the Paul George that uh, I like to see I'm, I'm, I've always been a big Paul George fan, even though he doesn't play for my favorite team, the Houston Rockets. But this dude put it down tonight. This is what we want to see from Paul George. PG thirteen. This is this is the this is that cat. He was unbelievable, unstoppable. And if he steps up like that, and I just you know, I'm not. I haven't been really impressed with the Thunder this season. I thought they should have won more games than that they, than they did. 36 points tonight, man. If this dude shows up like that, they can they can beat anybody. I don't I don't know if, if it comes down to if they can beat Golden State four games. And a lot of people question whether or not they can beat the Houston Rockets four games. I'm a huge Houston Rockets fan. I'm gonna put that out there right now. If this dude shows up like that, they can absolutely beat the Houston Rockets. Let's just be real about it. So 36 points for him, 29 points from Russell Westbrook. What else is new? 13 rebounds, 8 assists. Another night at the office for uh, Russ. Well, let's talk about Carmelo Anthony a quick second. This, this is the type of thing that I, I, I think you have to see with Oklahoma City. 15 points in uh, 37 minutes. 5 of 13 shooting. Not great shooting, but not bad. Not terrible. This is what I, I think you need to see. I think Russell Westbrook and Paul George need to be on an every night basis. Uh, obviously, obviously Westbrook is. Let's be real, okay? Westbrook is ne- has definitely been the alpha dog of this basketball team. He is, is This is his team. But I think we saw Paul George kind of take a back seat. Because Carmelo Anthony is on the floor, because Westbrook is on the floor, this is how, to me. This is kind of how the scoring needs to be distributed on a nightly basis. You know, whether it's Westbrook or George leading, I think Carmelo has to take the back seat. And this is what I'm talking about. I like this: 13 shots. Well, George shot 20 shots. Westbrook shot 25. I think that's evenly matched. And then, of course, you get Stephen Adams putting in his 12 points. I mean, he's gonna, he's pretty much good for that. They're going to have to have those kind of performances because this bench is not very strong for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And that's what's going to determine how far they go in the playoffs. Can they get better bench play? I mean, Alex Sabrina's at 11 points. He's a good guy. Can shoot knockdown threes pretty good. He was 3 or 5 tonight. But that was it. That was it from their bench. Except, I mean, unless you want to count two points from Raymond Felton and four points from Jeremy Grant. I mean, that was it from their bench. So they've got to get better at that. But again, a good win for the Thunder. Utah, I, you know, I picked Utah to win this series. You know? Let's just be, let's just say that I wasn't really expecting Paul George to have that type of performance. We'll see if he keeps it up. That's the thing. I don't think he's had that consistency uh, throughout the season. So, I don't know, man. We'll see what's up with that. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had a really nice game for Utah. But, you know, 27 points, 10 rebounds. But they're going to have to get more. uh, Oklahoma City Thunder really kind of bottled them up defensively. 
you know, Joe Ingles at 13 points, Rudy Gobert, Stifle Tower at 14 points, Rubio 13. Good performance, but they're gonna have to get a little bit more from their their others. <laughs> They're going to have to get a little bit more from them. So we'll see what happens game two. Eight-point loss tonight. Let's go with the other game in the Western Conference tonight. The one that just ended just a little while ago. The Houston Rockets hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Really good ball game. A little bit too good for my taste. Me being a (laughs) Houston Rockets fan. What can you say? Another guy putting his name in the hat. For play of the weekend, James Harden, the beer, was unbelievable. 44 points tonight. He saved the Rockets. There's no question about that. 13 huge points in the fourth quarter. You know, Chris Paul was okay. He had a decent night. Had that huge, you know, could have been a huge turnover there at the end of the game. Thank goodness it, it didn't turn out to be. Uh, Clint Capella. Clint Capella was unreal. He was really the guy that kind of got Houston going in the first place. Oh, well, you know, of course it was off the pick and roll where he was <sighs> dished the ball by Harden or Chris Paul or whoever, but still his block shots, his defense on the one end and, and then coming and making plays out of the pick and roll on the offensive end was stellar. Set there 24 points, man. 12 rebounds. Dude was unbelievable. He outplayed uh, Carl Anthony Towns cat was non-existent in this basketball game which unfortunately for Minnesota fans is not that abnormal uh, cat only you know, I'm going to get to that stat here in just a second cat you know nine shots in this basketball game three of nine good as Jimmy Butler is I'm a big Jimmy Butler fan love Jimmy Butler you know, Carl Anthony Towns, this team should be running through, their offense should be running through Carl Anthony Towns. Period. Point blank simple. For him to shoot nine shots is not good at all. Eight points. You got to get more than that, man. Eight points, 12 rebounds from Cat. You know, Teague had a nice game, 15 points. Wiggins, 18 points. Doesn't matter. All that doesn't matter. I mean, Derrick Rose came in and played his played his ass off. Let's just be real about it. 16 points. Doesn't matter. 15 points from Jamal Crawford. It doesn't matter. When Cat shoots the ball nine times. Doesn't matter, man. And that's, you know, and the thing about it is, for Houston, if you sit there and you look at this basketball game, Houston didn't play well. You know, I got on this team, and this is my ball club, like I said. I got on this team for the way they ended the season. I understand it. Oh, well, you know, these games didn't matter. I get all of that. But this team has kind of changed to a certain degree. They all of a sudden, you know, they, of course they're going to be an ISO team. You have James Harden and Chris Paul, guys like that. You're going, Of course you're going to be a team that's going to be very ISO-oriented. But... The pace slowed down a lot. I, I will say they, they really played at a fast pace tonight, and I was happy to see that. But I don't know, man. I mean, I know I understand we, we shoot a lot of threes. Uh, I, I was happy with the defense tonight, but again, I think Minnesota bailed them out. So, I don't know. Houston not playing tip-top shape right now. Not impressed with what uh, the way they played tonight, except for James Harden and Clint Capella. Other than that, they didn't get anything, man. Chris Paul, 14 points is decent, maybe. P.J. Tucker, three points. Ariza, three points. Eric Gordon, seven points. That type of performance, those type of performances are not going to get it done. Forget about Golden State. That's not that. That's not going to beat Oklahoma City if you if you face them in the next round. You might get by Minnesota, but you're not beating anybody else with that. Let's just be real about it. So let's we'll see how the Rockets come out game two. Let's move on to yesterday's action in the Western Conference. We'll quickly go through those. 
again, you know, <laughs> Golden State Warriors, man, all over the San Antonio Spurs, 113 and 92. What else can you say? The Spurs, you have to feel sorry. I, I, I kind of feel sorry for Spurs fans to a, to a little bit of a degree, maybe a, a hair. <laughs> I mean, not having their main guy, Kawhi Leonard, not having them all season, man, it's just, you know, that that has really been unbelievable. I don't know what's going on with that situation. I don't know how it's going to end. It's not like, it's it's looking like it's not going to end with him being in San Antonio. It looks like, it's looking like he's going to end up somewhere else. I don't know where that's going to be, L.A., where he's from or whatever. I don't know not a good situation, but the Golden State Warriors, were, they look like the Warriors are supposed to look yesterday, even without Steph Curry. Uh, Clay Thompson led the way with 27 points on five three-pointers. I mean, what else is new, man? Golden State's going to win that series easily. I think that's probably the only series that uh, there's no doubt we know who's going to win it. Maybe the Sixers series, the way they played last night. Other than that, I think every other series, it would not sh- just shock me that the, other, the underdog wins. It. it really wouldn't. But the game that I really looked at last night, the New Orleans Pelicans, Portland Trailblazers, I've got, that's one of my, I think it would be a mild upset. I've, I've got the Pelicans picked to beat the Blazers and, uh, six or seven games. It's going to be a long series, I think. The another, the another guy that put his name in the hat for my player of the weekend, Anthony Davis. The brow was unbelievable. 35 points, 14 rebounds, four huge block shots. This dude, man, this dude is, is just crazy. The things that he can do on the basketball floor. Uh, Anybody that doesn't like the way he plays the game, I don't know. But only thing that if there is one negative about this dude is his, in, you know, his, you know, being injured. You know, getting injured at the drop of a hat like he does, having to go out of games uh, so often. Other than that, there is nothing you can say negative about this dude on the basketball court. Absolutely nothing. And the, the, the Pelicans are a better team to me without DeMarcus Cousins. I don't mean that to be derogatory toward DeMarcus Cousins, toward Boogie at all. I mean I, I mean, I like Boogie. Don't get me wrong. I just think that Boogie not being on the floor, especially offensively, opens things up for Anthony Davis. And I think that's why you've seen him go on this tear. I think Niccolo, uh, Nicola, 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 Miritich is a, is a really good, uh, you know, is a really good compliment to him as well. Miritich had 16 points last night, 11 rebounds. But I think the biggest thing with this New Orleans Pelicans team, though, is uh, the emergence of Drew Holiday. Not just offensively. I mean, he had 21 points offensively. He had his best scoring year uh, of his career this past season, but this dude on de- on defense, of course, he made that huge block to save that game last night at the end. You know, uh, this dude, 39 minutes, man, he was unbelievable. And uh, him and Rondo in that backcourt, Rondo had another typical game for his 17 assists. But no, Rondo can still defend. I mean, I, yeah, of course, he's lost a step over the years. He's not quick as he used to be, but this dude can still get out there and defend. And with Drew Holiday, they can make life tough on C.J. McCollum and uh, Damian Lillard. The way uh, Alvin Gentry drew up the game plan, using Anthony Davis to kind of guard them as well, I thought was really good. Now, the only part about that, with Davis playing 40 minutes, Miritich playing 39 minutes, those guys got tired at the end of that game. That was the only reason that game got close at the end. New Orleans is the better team. New Orleans is 
the sixth seed. Portland is the three seed. New Orleans right now today is the better team. The better team won that basketball game last night. And I think the better team is going to win this series. Another cat off the bench is Ian Clark. Ten points. You know, he was, uh, came over from Golden State. I think that's a guy that they can could have the, the Golden State could use right now to be honest with you I thought he was really good down the stretch of that basketball game again I, I've got New Orleans winning this series and I looked good last night we'll see if they can continue that uh, just real quick let's, let's look at uh, Portland stats they are up to another slow start as well in the first half being McCollum and Dane I mean Dane Lillard those dudes were, real, real, were horrible in the first half. They kind of rebounded in the second half. Dame uh, having 18 points, McCollum 19. But those numbers are below what you expect from the Portland Trailblazers at this point. So, again, a really fantastic weekend of action, man. The, the playoffs are off and running with a fantastic start. Again, let's talk about... Uh, some of those really great performances again I'm looking at three guys four guys of course Harden throwing his name in the hat for player of the weekend (laughs) Uh, Anthony Davis the brow unbelievable performance Paul George unbelievable performance I'm going with I'm going with uh, Anthony Davis though for me for him to uh New Orleans to go in and win that game on the road. I'm not saying that Anthony Davis was necessarily a better performance than Harden or Paul George, but just the fact that New Orleans won the game on the road, a team that's lower seeded than the team that they're playing. Oklahoma City was playing at home, Houston playing at home. I'm going to give it to Anthony Davis, man. This dude has been unbelievable. He continued that last night, so Congrats to him. I don't know if he'll ever <laughs> know that he won this award this weekend, but I'm giving it to him. And we're going to do that every night as the playoffs move on. Again, I want to thank you for joining me. This is Sports on Swag Radio. Just a little bit of a look at what we saw here in the first weekend of the NBA playoffs. Again, my name is Kerry Wood. You can find me on Twitter, C. Wood on Sports. Follow me there. Follow Sports and Swag Report at Sports and Swag. They're on uh, Twitter, Instagram as well, at Sports and Swag Report, at C. Wood on Sports on Instagram. Like the Facebook page. When we're on Pinterest, <laughs> we're on Google Plus. Pretty much, man, you, all you have to do is just put in Sports and Swag, and I guarantee it's going to pop up for you again. Check out the website, sportsandswagreport.com. Got a lot of uh, good uh, content going on on there. Baseball season started in. We have several articles last week about that. We got the NFL draft coming up. We're going to have some stuff going on about that. We'll have some college football, mainly SEC with the spring games going down. Man, we're just going to be all over the place and, uh, I think it will definitely be a good thing for you to check it out. Again, I want to thank you for coming in tonight. We'll see you uh, later on as the playoffs keep moving on. I'm out.